As Senior Vice President of Silver Seas Expedition and Destination Management Programs, I literally have one of the best jobs in the world. Together with my team, we are involved in the planning of many of our voyages and have spent many years exploring, not only on scouting missions, but also together with our guests, some of the most remote parts of our planet. Over the years, I've read many incredible tales of harrowing expeditions and some foolish, if not stupid endeavors. Some of the books I've read have shaped who I am and instilled a yearning to travel and explore in me. As we temporarily become armchair travelers, I would love to take the opportunity to share with you some of my favorite exploration books and hope that if you read them, you will enjoy them as much as I did. The first book I would like to share with you is one of the first books of exploration I read while working on expedition ships. Kontiki by Thor Heyerdahl is an absolute classic. In the 1930s, Norwegian ethnographer Thor Heyerdahl, then living on an island in the Marquesas group in French Polynesia, heard an interesting tale from an old man who spoke of legends regarding the origins of the Polynesians. He told of a divine ancestor named Tiki who arrived on a boat. Intrigued by this legend, Heyerdahl did some further research, looking at everything from the presence of coconuts in Polynesia to the resemblance between the Easter Island statues and statues of Peru and surrounding countries. He came up with what most dismissed as an absolutely crazy conclusion. And that is that Polynesia had been peopled by immigrants sailing in from across the Pacific Ocean. In fact, all the way from Peru. He decided to prove his theory by duplicating the legendary voyage with five fellow adventurers. Heyerdahl decided to reenact the voyage using a raft he believed would have been similar to that of the ancient Polynesians and was used to travel the four and a half thousand nautical miles from the South American continent to Polynesia. The vessel eventually was christened Kontiki and on 28 April 1947 departed from Callao, Peru. The Kontiki raft set off with Heyerdahl, a Spanish-speaking green parrot and five men, four Norwegians and a Swede. What amazed me was his determination and optimism. When naval officials inspected the raft prior to departure, they insisted he was sailing off to his imminent death. He should abort, they said, but instead of being discouraged or fearful, Thor was confident his expedition would succeed because his predecessors had. Borne along by the northeast trade winds that bellowed the massive square sail bearing the image of the bearded Kontiki, the raft groaned and creaked as it drifted across the vast blue Pacific Ocean. Just a little over 90 days later, it arrived at Puka Puka, a tiny island in French Polynesia, just like Kontiki might have done centuries earlier. Heidel chronic chronicled this amazing adventure in his book, creating a fascinating tale, which I first read two decades ago on my first voyage from Easter Island to French Polynesia. He recounts in the book of incredible storms and the abundance of sea life that they encountered, talking about creatures that they were unable to identify during the voyage. And of course, their final point of entry into French Polynesia, Puka Puka. Actually, on my very first voyage to the South Pacific, I was amazed by the fact that they would have actually arrived at Puka Puka, a tiny dot in the ocean. But it's also one of the most difficult places I've ever had to take people ashore by Zodiac. So difficult a landing that you have to have absolute perfect weather conditions. And even then, it's a tricky, tricky feat. The fact that these men achieved it on this kind of raft is absolutely amazing. And I suppose a little bit of dumb luck. This is a gripping and exhilarating account of a remarkable voyage. It is a very human one too, in somewhat self-depreciating style in which Heyerdahl sometimes describes the accidents and the misfortunes which befell him and his colleagues. 
such great courage, tenacity, daring, and adventure. In our techno-savvy world with GPSs and computers, it is hard to grasp the accomplishments Heyerdahl and his crew achieved, floating and drifting thousands of miles across the open Pacific for three months. And this they did on a raft made of natural resources. In fact, in the words of Tom Long of the Detroit News, Kontiki is an awesome in the true sense of the word. You are in awe of the bravery, the audacity, stupidity, and natural power on display. Ah, to imagine and to dream and to go forth. Kontiki by Tor Heyerdahl, a fantastic read, and I hope you will enjoy this book as much as I do.